Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Heavy Repping. My name is John Tron Davidson and I'm here once again outside because it is wonderful weather but because of the quarantine I am outside my front door because that is as far as I can go. So because it's been a while uh, since I've done a top five, I thought it'd be quite fun to do my top five of the first quarter of the year. Now, obviously we've moved a little bit into April, but um, I usually do a top five or six, so this isn't exactly a regular thing regardless. That being said, I'm going to show you my top five or six uh, different picks that have really made a difference in the last few months. So without further ado, let's go back inside and do the thing. So what does it take for a pick to stand out? Well, it's just something that I've particularly enjoyed playing over the last little while. But this has been a very interesting time because a lot of stuff has come up uh, that is materials I've never tried before or it's been makers I've never tried before and some makers that were already established here at Heavy Repping but I've had a chance to try other new things from them. So it goes without saying there's going to be a couple of things that you've seen uh, in reviews that I've done, but there's also going to be a couple of makers you probably won't have heard of all that much and I thought I'd give them a little bit more of a showcase today. So, the picks that we're going to run through are as follows. The Pigtrum Butt, the BHL Wizard Pro, the Jim Dunlop Jazz Polycarbonate, the Hendrix Mammoth Ivory, the Fellow Gorilla Grip Jazz XL 2mm and the Killy Nonus Turbo. So let's talk about our German pal first here in the Pigtrum but This is something that came up in the Sustainable Picks video. <laughs> I was going to say but. And I felt it was worth revisiting now that I've had even more time to spend with it. This genuinely is a really fascinating article simply because uh, it is made from a biopolymer. So although it's injection molded, uh, it's still essentially really hard plastic. The grip's really good. Tone's very, very serious and very, very straight. Uh, it's not what I would describe as a laugh a minute, but when I play, it isn't generally a laugh a minute. And so I found this, not only from an engineering perspective, incredibly exciting, but also from a tonal perspective, uh, a really fun ride. So I'll crack out the stick board and whim, show you what I'm talking about. Wizard Pro coming all the way from Hong Kong. Thank you very much, Mr. Brock Little. This is the U-Glass version of the Ben Eller Signature, which is the Wizard. Um, this is essentially a mad, mad buffed out uh, Jazz 3 XL, which is obviously a pick I've mentioned a couple of times on the channel. But this is an amazing version of this shape. And part of the reason for that is because it's so hard and it's so fast through the strings. And the thing that I really liked about it was that I never felt at any point that it was gonna get wayward. Something that's really interesting about the heavy pick thing, if you're coming to this for the first time, hello. This is one of those picks where if you just relax and you let the pick do the work all day, it'll never even think about it. There's so much power in picks like this that it's just And I'm a terrible person for the gripping like that way too hard and playing way too hard and I found that as soon as I relaxed with this it was a breeze I was hurling stuff out left right and centre so let's get the old girl out and do the business <laughs> tangential on this but this is a jazz polycarbonate from Jim Dunlop. Now this is not a range that you would necessarily know anything about if you weren't a gypsy player but I get given this uh, by a friend of mine uh, Conan from Backhand Saloon, shout out to Backhand Saloon, uh, who works at Project Music down here next there and he's been playing a lot of gypsy and Django stuff recently and he said to me this is about a year ago he gave me this pick and I've been playing with this and the two weights and the 207s kind of off and on but in the last sort of three, four weeks um, I got this out of my enormous Dunlop jug thing uh, and it does obviously that polycarbonate does have a chirping quality once you go past 2mm 
but it's got a real grace to it and that's something I'm always looking for in a pick. There's a slightly wayward character to it when you play conventionally. Like if you're playing down, 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 down all the time then it's fine because that's kind of what it's meant for. But if you play in more contemporary styles, let me say, let we say, let me say, let you say, let he say. It's surprisingly easy and something that's quite unusual is that I tried this against its thinner, pointier cousin and it's odd that they're the same, same material, same grips, but the thicker model with these enormous bevels on it, huge obliques, like the, I'll try and get a picture of them up here, but they really are massive. It's just as if there's nothing there. So if you want, if you want to play with a lot of force, but you want to be able to like slide into it like a pair of slippers or something, this is the heavy ticket. <laughs> This pick came to me from Rens Hendricks, uh, who's a blacksmith in the Netherlands, because of course it did. But this is made of mammoth ivory, it came all the way here from northeastern Russia, and it's based on the Jazz XL, which is no surprise because these are all custom jobs, but he's only making I think 20 or 25 of these, and it is mammoth ivory. So this pick right here, ladies and gentlemen, is anywhere between 10 and 50,000 years old. Uh, it is perfectly finished, like pfft, unbelievably well finished. And uh, the tone, while you'd expect it to chirp like anything, and obviously it does, because it's polished, it's quite sticky when you play it. Now I've talked before about how I've got dry hands, and I do have dry hands, so only certain materials work for me. But man alive, can you get in about it with this thing? <laughs> the power is instantaneous, uh, much more so than the bone picks that I've tried. I don't know whether that's down to uh, the porosity or lack thereof of the material, just the sheer density and mass of it, or the fact that it's been sat in the Siberian wastes being frozen solid for the last um, millennia. It was sourced kind of as a collector's piece, but I have used it and it is excellent. Going to the far-flung corners of the world again, this is a Fellow Plectrum's Gorilla Grip 2mm. Now this is made from Delrin, which is something that would be familiar to literally everyone who comes across this channel, and if you are not a guitar player, I'm not sure how you got here, but welcome to the Plectroverse. This is the material that is used by Dunlop and Dandrea and Pickboy and every single promotional pick you've ever seen. Uh, but it is two millimetres and it's given this kind of powder coat that Fellow put on in Australia. Um, I've had these picks now for about a year and recently I came back and started playing with them again because I was looking for something to give me a much softer sound. And um, particularly on electric, I find this is great. It does chirp a little on acoustic. Anything that's anything that's two milling up is going to do that. But in terms of a pick that's got really, really nice, smooth contours to the sound, particularly the attack is very soft. Uh, it's not as soft as you get from something like uh, an Ibanez Elastomer uh, or a Wedgie Rubber or something like that. But it's it's got a, a very kind of cushioned sort of feel to it, so I've been playing with this a lot and I found it a joy to write with.
last, ladies and gentlemen, but by no means least, this outrageous thing is a Kelly Nonus Turbo. Uh, this is made here in the UK by Kelly Nonus, who is a Macaferry guitar maker and a gypsy player. Um, I reviewed this recently. He says it's made from Delrin. I don't think it is, because it's very, very, very hard. Uh, I think this is about the two and a half, three mil mark. Yeah, 3.3 millimeters. Um, the center piece here is made from brass, and the piece on the back, the little green bit, is made from a material called Stingray. I don't know what that is. Even though this was designed for Gypsy Jazz, and it very much was, this slays left, right, and center with everything I tried to do it with. And it's not just how amazing it is, it's the fact that it was able to go so far outside its remit that I found amazing. So, I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. This isn't a way of saying these picks are all like, but they are very, very good. The thing that's really interesting about them is that they are all very, very different, apart from the fact that they're all kind of hefty. Uh, they all give completely different tonalities, but crucially, they all give a different physical experience. And one of the things that I really look for when I'm going through my whole collection is that I'm trying to find something that when I pick it up and use it, it feels like nothing. And the reason why I say that is because when I'm playing a pick that I'm conscious of, like say uh, a perfect example of this is the Iron Age Fenrir's Fang. Great pick, made from Kyranite, beautifully finished, all the rest of it. For me, it's a little bit too long feeling. I love the sound, I love the pop of it, which is really good. Um, but because it's kind of lengthy and the Dunlop Sharp is the same, uh, I'm very conscious of it when I'm playing. Now, there's a couple of people I work with, a lad called Harry who's a crazy mandolin player and like kind of gent guy. And when he plays those really kind of what I call toothy picks, um, he finds it no bother at all. He struggles with the kind of more blunt stuff that I like. When I'm trying these out, the key thing is just that I pick it up and obviously they'll feel different of thicknesses, materials and grooves, whatever. But it's, the, it's not just the tonality, it's the experience along the way. And all of these picks here, all different materials and all the rest of it, um, they've all got something to commend them. Some of them are made by small makers, some of them are made by bigger makers. Some of them, they're not repeatable items and all the rest of it. But heavy repping is about showing you what's out there, what's possible and what you might do if you've got any sort of bent towards um, being a bit handier and doing creative stuff, um, getting a wee bench grinder and start making your own picks or whatever. There's nothing wrong with that. I love all of these picks equally. I use some of them a little more than others, but they are all viable candidates for you. So I have left links down in the description and you can obviously follow all the makers uh, at the links that I've given during the video. At this incredibly difficult time, because this video will go out while we're still on lockdown, at least here in the UK, um, I hope you're all being incredibly safe taking this thing seriously because it's clearly not a joke. Wash your hands, do your social distancing, stay at home when you can, look after each other, that's very, very important, and stay safe. So, in the meantime, my name is John Tron Davidson, this is Heavy Repping, and I shall see you soon. So just remember, if you're not sure what to do in life, rep hard and rep heavy.